from the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. As always, I want to do something up front here, and that is to say thank you to Jack Van Impey because he certainly gives us the headlines that we don't see ordinarily locally. This first one really boggled my mind. Thousands he'd call to arms in Iraq. Were you surprised? I really was when I saw them picking up those guns over there and marching through Iraq. Again, Israeli Arab official warns of Armageddon over anti-Islam film. That's quite serious, isn't it? And then here's another warning. South Korea warns of nuclear arms race. I'm going to ask Jack a very serious question about that, and that is, will we be using them, the arms race? Now, you know, Jack, again, I want to say thank you. You spend so many hours every single week gathering materials, and I deeply appreciate it. And I know all of you appreciate it, too. Thank you. Rexella, I save up articles, and um, my CEO spends five hours a day getting the headlines from around the world. I will have, any time I prepare for a program, by subject, 500 headlines. And then I'll ask the Holy Spirit to lead me, and I keep walking among the headlines and pulling one by one. And uh, it's really a job, but it's worth it because we tell the people things they can't find out in most newspapers in America today. Yes, thank you to our CEO, Ken Bansell, so very much. Iraq's most influential Shiite cleric issued a rare call to arms to defend themselves against attacking what they said Sunni insurgents. All right, let's take a look at this. Thousands he called to arms in Iraq. Iraq intensifies battle with Sunni insurgents. Hmm. And Shiite militias decamping from Syria to fight in Iraq, convert to Islam or face the sword. That's what they're saying. Either you become Islamic or you are dead. Once again, Iraq militants claim soldier massacre. Will you take a look at that? You know, I said to Jerry, our director, take a look at that. All those soldiers on the ground and all they do, they're killing them. They call them insurgents. And then here's a great question. Why did we go over there? Why did we go over there? What a question that is. And I'm going to ask Jack some very, very serious questions. Now, the first one, someone the other day said to me, what is ISIS? Well, I had to really do some research to find out. And I think it'd be good if Jack were to really explain what ISIS is. Is it a terrorist group, Jack? Rexel, I really studied this to clarify these things in the minds of the people listening to me. All you read about in the newspapers is ISIS. Oh, ISIS, what is that? It's the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. Now, there are times that you read this, the Islamic State of Levant or Sham. Levant and Sham are other nations that are going to pull into it for one of the most powerful things in all of the Middle East. Who are they going to try to pull in? Cyprus, Lebanon, Israel, Palestine, Jordan, South Turkey. And when they get all those in, that will be the entire state. Now, I want to say something here. You know, people are saying, oh, what is wrong with those Sunnis killing all those people? Wait a minute. Do you know that the Shiites are only 10% of the Muslims of the world? And the Alawites, that's Assad of Syria, only 3%, and they broke away from the Shiites in the 9th century. Now, the Sunnis are 87%. They're nine times as big as the Shiites. But it's Iran and the Shiite nations who are trying to kill every Sunni. The 160,000 slaughtered in Syria to this moment are basically 
It was Sunnis and some Christians. Now, these people, the Sunnis, who've lost thousands of their family members and children, are moving into Iraq, not to get the people of Iraq, but to get the Shiites there, who are bringing mass devastation to the Middle East, and it's going to get worse and worse until we have the biggest civil war in the area. So you can see a little bit that there's revenge there, and maybe rightfully so, because believe me, this Iran is the trouble spot of the world, and it is Iran and that little Hitler Ahmadinejad who said we're going to kill every Jew and every American because we hate the little Satan and the big Satan, the USA. And though they have a new guy as president, doesn't mean a thing. He was under Khomeini, who was deported to France and came back and killed the Shah. And he says, we're going to kill everyone we have to in order to establish a new world order. Under what? Shia. Yeah. Shiites. You know, Jack, <clears throat> as Iraq falls into chaos, I couldn't help but have my heart go out on that last picture that I showed you a moment ago. Why did we go over there? It was a picture of a father holding his son's picture who died there. Why did we go over there? How much did it cost? How many lives did we lose over there? Jack, just remind us, if you will, please. We've lost 4,400 of our boys, 32,000 who've come home without eyes, arms, legs, and wounds. And the cost was two trillion, two hundred billion dollars. And now these boys come home and they say, we don't have a job for you. And 48,000 of these military men are homeless having to sleep on the streets and they have to wait nine months with the vet administration to get any help. God forgive America and God forgive you, Mr. President. Mm, yes, Jack. Uh, now we're all familiar with this name, Al-Qaeda. That's a terrorist organization, of course. How many terrorist organizations are there, Jack? Can you kind of fill us in on that one, too? Forty-nine different organizations, many of these you know about. That's Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, the Brotherhood of Egypt. And then, of course, we have Hamas, Hezbollah, and Fatah, all doing the worst they can against the Jew as they try to hit them from Palestine, and right now they've got 220,000 rockets aimed at the Jew. And oh, these poor Palestinian people, even Pope Francis was there and says, I want to be the Che Guevara and help the Palestinians against the Jews, the liberation. Come on. Don't you think 220,000 rockets aimed at them is enough? But that's not all. We also have Boca Heron. That's the group that just kidnapped all these girls. Hmm. The group that had so much to do with Kenya when they went in and said, tell us the name of Muhammad's mother. If they couldn't, they shot him dead. These are vicious people. We've just discovered a new group called Weebers in China. And you know the Chinese media has tried to silence it. They didn't want people to know about this group. And so they made up all kinds of excuses, and now they have just released the information that these people constitute 10 million Muslims in China, and they are going to create, try to, holy jihad, holy war in China. And do you know that it wasn't long ago at that train station, they took foot-long butcher knives and machetes and ran into scores of people and stabbed them to death and mach used machetes on them to chop them into pieces. The next thing they've just done recently is to get trucks and run down the people, crush them on the streets. And Rexella, the latest thing that happened, if you remember, is a guy by the name of Alaki, an American who became a murderer for Islam. And he was just killed in Yemen by one of our drone attacks. And he prints a paper called The Inspirer sends it to all the Muslim areas of American Canada when he was alive, but the paper continues. And in it, he went further than what these people did in China. He said, all you people there in Dearborn, wherever there are Muslim settlements, get yourself trucks and put blades out in front of them and run into them and cut them all to pieces as well. Oh I'll tell you what 
is this all about? What kind of people are they? And now we've got guys saying, let's have our little Bible studies together. Come on. Oh, my, oh, my, Jack. Well, you know, the militants over there in Iraq already have seized strategic areas. And many feel that the next step is the headline you're going to see right now. Iraq heads for civil war going on. The Sunni Shiite war. And Iraq changes prayer direction from Kabbalah, not Mecca. All right, they're saying we're going to go from Mecca to Kabbalah. Now, my first question for Jack is this. Uh, explain to me, if you will, please, what's the difference <laughs> between Shiite and Sunni? They're both the same religion. The one is 10% of the population of the Muslims, as I've already said, Shiites, and the other 87% happen to be the Sunnis and the 3% Alawites. Aside in his group. Terrible days are ahead of us. And it's all going to lead to holy jihad, world war. That's their goal. Control all the world. They have Khomeini who came back from France and said, we want to control every area of the world. Khomeini, who's the president Amin, of Iran, said, the thing we want even if it destroys all of our people through atomic warfare, is to set up the flag of Islam in front of the White House of the United States of America. And the guy in this country who had invited Rick Warren to all these conferences to speak, and he's saying, let's get together and study the Quran and Bible together. Kabani says, we are going to create the one world government, the one world religion. And Jesus... Oh, yeah, they love him. He's their prophet. Jesus, our prophet, will be the one who puts to death every Jew and Christian who will not convert to his preaching for Jesus, our prophet, became a Muslim while he was gone. God help us. Oh, yes. That's not the Jesus of the Bible, my Savior, Jesus, the Son of God. Now, the Syrian conflict, have you noticed this, friends? It's just engulfed that whole area. It's spread across the entire Middle East. Apocalyptic prophecies drive both sides to Syrian battle for end of time. Now, keep that in mind. End of time. Israeli Arab official warns of Armageddon over anti-Islam film. And Israel preparing for Armageddon and forget U.S. help. Now, I've read that before, but they are serious. Prepare for Armageddon. And then going on, Islam's express goal is to gain dominion over as many nations as possible and eventually impose Islamic or Sharia law on all the people of the world. This is the ambition of committed Muslims. Infidels who have no rights must be either one to Islam, forced into submission, or be killed. That says it all, doesn't it, friends? Oh, my. Now, I'm going to back up here. Remember I said keep that in mind about the end of time? Does that mean the end of the world, Jack? A lot of people think it does. Armageddon means the end of the world. Does it mean the end of the world? Even Christians have talked about the end of the world because they misunderstand six Bible verses, and that's Matthew 13, 39, verse 40, 49, Matthew 24, 3, Matthew 28, 20, and Hebrews 9, 26, when it talks about the end of the world in those texts. It should not state that. The Greek actually is the end of the age. Now, it can't be the end of the world in Matthew 24, 3, because when one turns the page, next page, chapter 25, verse 31, Christ returns to the earth to set up his kingdom. And the world cannot have ended because when he sets up that kingdom in Revelation 19, 16, as he comes as the king of the kings and lord of the lords, he rules and reigns for a thousand years. And then he's recommissioned in 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28. And now Revelation 11, 15 says, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and forever and forever. No end. 
And that's why Isaiah 45, 17, Ephesians 3, 21, both say it's a world without end. Amen, amen. And Ephesians 3, 21, I love. Unto Christ be glory in the church throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. And there are 120 more texts that say the world is never going to end. But I love this one. When Jesus comes to rule and reign, Gabriel, at the birth of Jesus, told Mary the whole story. Luke 1, 32 and 33. Your son shall be great. He shall be called the son of the highest. And he shall sit upon the throne of his father David in Jerusalem. Not Palestine, Jerusalem. <laughs> and he shall reign over the house of Israel forever and forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Understand? The world will never end. Use the word age there. The age of grace. The age of the church. We go home. And now we return, and the age of the church is over because after Revelation 2 and 3, you never see the church again. Now it's the age of the kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, 10, we've been praying it for centuries, and it's about to happen. You know, Jack, I've asked this question before, and actually it's a very, very, very important question. Why do so many Middle East countries hate Israel? And you enlighten me, Jack, by saying it's because God loves Israel yeah. and Satan hates Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. He says, I love you, Israel, not because you are the greatest of number, because you were the fewest, but because I loved you. And First Chronicles 21, 1 says, and get it all you Muslims and all you Jew haters and you Presbyterians who just voted at your meeting to have nothing to do with Israel anymore and to boycott them, God forgive you backsliders. Why? First Chronicles 21, 1, I repeat, Satan worked against Israel. And it's so sad when the whole denomination is following him. Oh my, Jack, that's serious, isn't yeah. it? Whoa. Well, here's a disturbing, thought-provoking headline concerning Russia. Now, we've got to keep our eye on her. Take a look. Russia to up nuclear weapons spending 50% by 2016. Now, whoa. That's only about a year and a half away. Can you believe that one? Beijing stands with Moscow. One more, largest joint military drills. Now, I want to stop here for a moment, please. And I want to ask Jack, does the Bible express that China and Russia will join together as buddies, as friends? Oh, what a book, Daniel 1144. Tidings and the Antichrist is sitting in the temple in Jerusalem, 2 Thessalonians 2 4, and tidings come against him from the east, China, and from the north, Russia. Now, Russia, Ezekiel 38 and 39. We have Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, all cities in Rosh, and it's the word there in the Hebrew, Rosh, or Russia today in English, fight the war of the latter years and latter days, verses 8 and 16. And they are defeated in a great way in chapter 39, verses 1 to 8 and 14. Now, China comes down from the east to be with them and join them. And it's the Shanghai Cooperative Organization. Yeah, it's in tune right now. And Revelation 16, 12 said, I saw the kings of the east, the Orient, come down. Where? To the Euphrates River in the Middle East. What for? The greatest war in history. Armageddon's described as Russia and China now meet together. It's the bloodiest thing ever. Listen to this, Revelation 9, 14. Loose the four angels bound in the great river Euphrates where our troops are now. Where the fooling around now. That's, and the four angels are four demonic spirits. And why are they loosed? To slay a third part of mankind. The number of the army was 200,000, 200 million. China alone can do that. Iraq and many of the Muslim nations can easily do that. And what's the purpose in slaying them? How? By these three was the third part of men killed, the fire, smoke, and brimstone. Rexala, I don't trust Iran for a minute as they're saying we're going to control this thing. We will not, if you let us go ahead and, and, and monkey with the centrifuges and dress, we'll not build a bomb. They're going to have a bomb, and when they get it, there's trouble, and America's going to be hit, believe me. Listen to this. This is what the Bible says about atomic weaponry. 
Psalm 97, 3, Isaiah 66, 15, Ezekiel 20, 47, Joel chapter 2, verse 3, a fire devours before them who? The Russian army's coming from the north. And the prophet sees them being driven back to severe blood, fire, pillars of smoke, nuclear blasts and its effects. Zephaniah 1, 18, the whole land shall be devoured by fire. Malachi 4, 1, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Revelation 8, 7, a third part of the trees was burned. All green grass was burned. And I already quoted Revelation 9, 18, by these three was the third part of men killed, fire, smoke, brimstone. God help us when it is let loose. And ladies and gentlemen, it could happen soon. Not only could some of these terrorists get things. I just heard Huckabee last Friday night, Saturday night. And he had two great military men there. Man, this startled me. These military said, we now have 3,000 Americans, and you in Canada have great numbers also, who are American and Canadian citizens. And they are training in Syria right now to come back and start the holy jihad and blow all America and Canada to hell. Two of the great military leaders of America. And we got a president who said, he just said it, oh, I don't want to take sides, Shiites or Sunnis. Mr. President, we're in trouble. You know, Jack, just very quickly, will the majority of the Islamic nations join with Russia? Oh, Rexella, I wish I had time to name every one of them. I'm just going to give you the numbers. Daniel 11:40, Isaiah 17, 1, Ezekiel 38, verses 5 to 7, and Psalm 83, verses 5 to 7. For one reason, let us destroy Israel, that their name be no more in remembrance, and they're going to try it. And the war is over Israel 18 times in Ezekiel 38 and 39. You'll find it. Get it, Ezekiel 38, verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice and 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, and 29. You need more proof? Show us where the headlines are, Excella. All right, we're going to back all that up that he has just said. And going on with those headlines, please. Here we are, defense experts war in Israel, possible ISIS threat. The Prime Minister, peace can only come when Palestinians recognize a Jewish state. Fatah, a two-state solution is dead. Time for armed conflict. Arab League states total rejection of Jewish state recognition. And Al-Aqsa uh, Sheikh, Jerusalem will be Muslim forever. An Iranian official, we are preparing to liberate Jerusalem. Are you kidding? Liberate Jerusalem? Hamas to Netanyahu will reign hell on Israel. And Iraq invaders threaten nuke attack on Israel. See Israel through all this, friends? Iranian film shows nuclear attack on Israel. And I'm going to ask Jack to quickly put this all together. It's all about Israel, isn't it? There's no doubt about it. Satan stood against Israel throughout the ages. First Chronicles 21.1 and 18 times I just proved that that is going to be the battlefield of the world and Russia and China will lead it and an Arab Federation and all hell is going to break loose but not against the Jew. God's going to come to the aid. All nations come against Jerusalem, Zechariah 14, 2. Jesus Christ appears in verse 4 and he smashes what they're trying to do against his beloved Jewish people. Mm. Jesus said that. He said, if I go away... I will come again. And he meant come again right there to Israel. He's going to stop Armageddon. It's not going to be the end of the world. But when Jesus comes back, will you be ready for that coming? Are you ready right now? Are you his child? Have you been forgiven of your sins? Have you put your faith in Jesus as Savior of the world, Son of God? I trust that you will. He died for you died for me. Will you open your heart right now as Jack prays that wonderful prayer? Jack. Oh, Jesus, your book has prophesied Armageddon, the worst battle in history. And I don't want to be here for it. And your word says we're going up in the rapture before it happens. That's your promise. And I want to be ready, Jesus. Oh, what a bleak picture is ahead for the globe. So, Jesus, I want peace in the midst of a troubled world. 
And your word says I could have peace in my heart with you. Jesus, Prince of Peace, Savior of the world, I want to be ready to meet you very soon. So Jesus, come into my heart. Wash me of all my sin. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Because I want to be with you, Jesus. Thank you for what you've done for me today. In your name, amen. Oh, amen. I trust that you prayed that prayer, that you opened your heart to the Lord Jesus as your Savior, and you've been forgiven of all your sins. How grateful I am that I prayed that prayer. Ready for the coming of the Lord. If you did, there's my address. Please write to me. I'll send you this little book at First Steps in a New Direction. The Lord wants to walk with you. I trust you prayed that prayer. And now, whoa, the last week for this wonderful offer. And it is the final three popes signals Christ's return. I love that, Christ's return. 1995, please, the last week, make the call or write to us. Jack, you want to say a word about this? And the Catholic prophecy, 975 years old, they're saying, and I'm not said, that when this Pope Francis rules, number 113 from Celestine II, he will rule near Armageddon and be the one that's Pope at the return of Christ to set up his kingdom. We won't need a vicar anymore or substitute then. We'll have the real one here. Amen. Oh, amen. How here, good. Right? Yes, and this is the last week, and here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend, to order the final three popes, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day. 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of 1995 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of 1995 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NIA6Y1. Last week, now back to Rex Ellen. Yes, you know, 1995, Jack did such a beautiful job on writing this book about the, the final pope, and it signals Christ's return. It's all in here. You really need to have this in your home because all the things we've been talking about is on here, and this is the last week. So there's the, um, the number to call, and there's the address, and I'll have it in the mail as soon as I hear from you. So please make the call right away. Last week, I can't believe it. it's gone so quickly. I want to leave you with this thought. Does the Lord really have a timetable for everything? God's timetable is not altered by the times. In other words, things going on in the world will not alter his timetable for things to happen as he has it all planned. We'll look forward, friends, to being in your home again next week. And until then, please remember, God cares for you, and so do we so very, very much. Bye-bye.